Before meteorite lands on Earth, it travels from its source planetary body, typically an asteroid, but maybe also Mars or the Moon, through space to Earth. Now, while traveling, it is called a meteoroid. It is then assumed that this meteoroid, initially on the planetary body, the asteroid, was buried and thereby protected from cosmic rays. Then, upon an impact and excavation of the rock, the meteoroid, it is then exposed to the cosmic rays. And these cosmic rays then produce various uh, new isotopes, radiogenic isotopes, within the meteoroid. Then this meteoroid lands on Earth, and then we can use these newly produced isotopes, radio um, active isotopes to determine the age it took the meteorite to travel from the source planetary body to Earth. And this age, this travel time, is then called the cosmic ray exposure age, or um, CREKH. And this is what is shown on these plots here. On the x-axis are the cosmic ray exposure ages, and on the y-axis the number of meteorites with the same cosmic ray exposure age. So these are histograms here. There are four of them. Um, and they show the H chondrites, the LL chondrites, and the HED meteorites. So these are all more or less rocky meteorites or stone meteorites. And then there's another plot for the iron meteorites. Now the, the stone meteorites, they all have the same x-axis scaling up to 80 million years. This is different for the iron meteorites, they have a scaling up to um, almost 1,500 million years, so 1.5 billion years. And this is the first major difference here. The iron meteorites can have much older cosmic ray exposure ages than the stone meteorites. This is usually interpreted that there is also space weathering, so the, um, the cosmic rays, the solar wind, um, collisions among smaller uh, particles, and all these processes are typically summarized as space weathering. And it is then assumed that the, or it is interpreted that this observation is that the stone meteorites are more easily destroyed by space weathering than the iron meteorites, and this is why stone meteorites, after a comparatively short time of maybe less than 100 million years, are completely destroyed whereas the iron meteorites can travel for billions of years. So this is a first thing we learn here from these um, observations. And secondly, when we look at, for example, the HED meteorites, it appears um, that it looks like there might be sort of two peaks, maybe one here at something like um, 7 million years or something like that, and the second one here, a little more than 20 million years, maybe 21, 22 million years, or something like this. Now, the HEDs are Howardites, Eucrites, and Diogenites, and they are assumed to come all from the asteroid Vesta, based on reflectance spectra. And then when we see here these peaks, then the interpretation is that there might have been two major collisions. I mean, there are more than these two peaks, there are also all these chondrites from these HED um, meteorites and, and these, for example, but two major peaks at 22 and 7 million years. And it's then assumed that maybe there were two larger impacts at 7 and 22 million years, and these larger impacts produced many meteorites and traveled to Earth and took about the same time because they have about similar trajectories and um, came to Earth. Now, if true, then what we observe among the ordinary chondrites are as well peaks. So, for example, here, this is one peak, and you can see this is quite a lot of meteorites, about 120. Um, yeah, maybe this, not really a peak, likely. So this peak here is about maybe at also 7 or 8 million years, something like that. There's a peak here in the LL chondrites, another peak here, and maybe a peak here. And this might then, again, indicate that um, there were major impacts on one individual parent body that produced a lot of meteorites that then together came to Earth and traveled at the same time, came together to Earth, which would mean all these chondrites here come from one parent body, all these chondrites here come from more or less one parent body, and this one and this one here as well. 
So this means that when you look at the meteorites, it's not that all the H chondrites or all the LL chondrites come from various parent bodies, but they might come from the same parent body. And the ordinary chondrites are quite abundant, but although they are abundant, it doesn't necessarily mean they come from there are many more ordinary chondrite parent bodies than, say, carbonaceous chondrite parent bodies, of which we have much fewer chondrites. It might just be that there were some heavy impacts on a few ordinary chondrite parent bodies that produced many, many meteorites that we then uh, received, um, but, but not that there are many ordinary parent bodies. And this is what we can lear learn from these cosmic ray exposure ages. So space weathering affected stone meteorites more than iron meteorites, and um, many meteorites might come actually from the same parent body and not that if you have many meteorites of one group it means there might must be lots of of this parent body so this is what we learn from these